Okay, I am going to check my mic levels here and uh, we'll go from there. All right, that all sounds good, I think. Let me know. Um, let's get started. Whoops. I've got a lot of screens here, so. Okay, so I got a face camera today, which is a little disconcerting, but um, good morning, good afternoon. Um, we are making a t-shirt today. I'm actually wearing, I'm wearing my t-shirt. Um, and it is, it feels like forever ago that I planned it. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, what are we making? This is the Ellie and Mac Everyday Tea, okay? Um, and it is a really good beginner project if you're new to sewing or knit sewing, like stretchy fabric sewing. And um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about grading, like... Uh, if you're someone who when you buy a shirt it's like if it fits at the waist and the hip it's too tight on the bust or um if it you know is it fits the bust but it's too tight on the hips that kind of a thing like if you've had that experience um sewing for yourself gives you the opportunity to really adjust your patterns so that they fit properly and this particular t-shirt is probably the easiest um, pattern to grade to actually adjust and the person I'm sewing for I just texted her and I said um, I want to make you a t-shirt can you send me your hip bust and waist measurements and it was kind of cool because um, she she's totally I wrote down her measurement she's totally a candidate for grading so I'm going to show you how to do that and the last thing I'll say about grading is it's actually pretty complex um, for a lot of garments, but this is pretty much the simplest garment uh, to do that with. So we're going to do a little lesson in grading. Um, and I'm going to go over the pattern a little bit and tell you kind of why I picked it. So let's, let's get started with that. And I only do this stream once a month, so I'm not, my, my keyboard shortcuts are um, a little rusty, so let's see if I can figure it out. There we go. Okay, yeah. So, um, so the pattern that we're using today is the Ellie and Mac Everyday Tea. And I picked it because their patterns have a pretty good size range. And it's um, also a, an example of one of those PDF companies who they really give you like a ton of information in the pattern. And like they're almost telling you if you had never sewn before in your life you could supposedly pick up this pattern and do it okay I'm just moving my camera out of the way so let's talk about the pattern a little bit so sizes XXS to 5XL and a fitted and loose fit style. So they kind of have a drawing here of a fitted style versus loose. And even more illustratively, 
there are a bunch of photos in the um, back of the pattern, which I'm seeing my partner did not print out. So um, you can see, oh, there we go, there's an example. You can see kind of a fitted style versus a relaxed style. And I'm making the fitted style today. The pattern comes with just two totally separate patterns for fitted versus relaxed. And what does is, what is the size range XXS to 5XL mean? So that means that this pattern will fit someone who has a bust that is 29 inches um, up to 60 inches. That's a pretty good size range. And a hip that is 33 inches up to 63. So um, this is just a simple Dolman t-shirt with a back center seam. And um, there's a bunch of them out there, but I like, I try to pick a pattern with a pretty good size range when I do my little classes here. Okay. So I had mentioned the back center seam, which is really interesting because I'm not sure why it's even included because it's not a curved seam. Um, but uh, if you did want to do some fitting through the additional fitting through the waist and, and the upper back, you could. So um, you'll look at the pattern and it's got just tons and tons of, uh, it tells you how to measure, it, it gives you a sewing glossary, supply list, fabric requirements, stretching guides. It's massive. And then you have all of the pattern, the actual pattern pieces you can print out. I printed out the print shop style, which I'll be showing you in a minute. And probably the only, the next thing to say, you need a good four-way stretch. You need a fabric that stretches both directions. And we've covered four-way versus two-way um, stretch many times in this uh, series. So if you don't if you don't know what that is by now, you need to pause this video um, and you need to read this pattern uh, thoroughly. Okay, this is showing you how to measure. But again, for a T-shirt, a lot of times you just need the full bust, the waist, and the full hip measurement. Okay, so. Sewing glossary. I mean, this is the part where you can test your stretch. This is on page eight. Um, I'm using a super stretchy sweater knit for mine. And here's your fabric requirements. So I am basically making uh, a 3XL, which means that I needed uh, two yards. Okay. And like I said, it looks like my partner didn't actually print out the whole pattern, but that's okay because I'm clever and I know how we can get around that. Um, let me pull up my, my pattern in here. So I absolutely love doing these little videos and I really love it when people um, sew with me or come back to uh, the project later and sew it. There we go. But it's always funny because I'm always, um, it's a month in between streaming classes. And so then I, it's like I lose my adept, you know, flipping between all of these little screens. So here's the pattern. You can see it. You've got your own copy, of course. Um, so we're at this stage where it's, oh my gosh, this is printing and taping. There you, you've printed out a million little pieces of paper and you tape them together. This is why I use the print shop copy. I, I am not a print and tape person. Um, okay, so we're starting to get to the sewing part. So I'm going to do the cutting now. Um, there we go. So here's, here's the cool, here's what I'm talking about with grading sizes. So. Can you see that person? Okay. So this is the person I'm sewing for. She has a 46 inch chest, a 37 inch waist, and a 48 inch hip. Okay. And what I did was I went to that table, the size range table, and I just wrote the sizes that she is. So her bust puts her in the 2XL size range. Her waist puts her in the XL size range, and her hip puts her in the 3XL. Um, so just write that down. So let's like write down your bust, waist, and hip, and then right next to it, just like I've done, write down 
what size that would stick you in. And if this is sort of terrifying and confusing, if you're already intimidated, just um, do the size that corresponds to your largest me measurement. So if you if you're like a large busted gal and you've got a bust that's in the you know two XL range and your waist and your hip is in the one X range, just we're gonna make it two XL. But if you want to learn a little grading, go ahead and write on the table like I've done. And then let's get our pattern out. So you'll pretty much instantly see. Oh my, I'm not sure why, huh, okay, you're going to instantly see this is the fitted, the, the fitted uh, version, and it comes with a front that we're cutting on the fold, a back that we're cutting um, not on the fold. Again, I said there was a seam there. And it comes with a neckband. I'm going to get a nice bright colored Sharpie for this next part. Hmm. For some reason, my camera is super low light today, but we are going to carry through. Okay. So, what I had said, if you look over upper left camera, is that she's a 2XL in the chest, an XXL in the waist, and a 3XL in the hip. So what I'm going to do before I cut is I'm going to find my 2XL at the chest level. So 2XL, 1, 2, 3, 4, is 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. That's 2XL. And I've got her as an XXL at the waist. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so, and we're kind of guessing where the waist is here, and that's totally okay. It, this is, this is um, not a, like, super fitted garment, so it's it's okay. <clears throat> and then we've got a 3XL at her hip. Okay, so 3XL, one, two, it's one, two, three. So here's, here's her hip. So, and I kind of wish I had a little zoom camera. Yeah, I definitely am having some lighting issues right here. But so what that means is that you just draw a curved line in between those points. So what's going to be nice about this finished garment is it will not like for her She's probably used to things that are really sort of baggy at the waist or too tight at the hip. And this shirt will actually fit her, her shape. And she'll notice, even though it's not a major, major difference. Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing for the back piece. So that's one, two, three, four. It's kind of weird to do it upside down too. So I'm just I'm just doing a little curve. Okay. That's all. That's all I need to do for grading for this. It's that simple. Okay. I'm about to cut out my paper pattern. And I will be right back to do that.
כן. <clears throat> so now I'm going to cut out my paper pattern. Only three pieces, front, back. Just draw a curved line in between. Okay, and why is this coming on? Thanks, guys. I can see your comments, and I appreciate them. Uh, uh, let's see. Here we are, finally, cutting our paper pattern, and... I apologize about the light. It's actually really distracting. I'm not sure why it's happening, but um, I think you can see enough to know what I'm doing. So, you know, a lot of people like to print and tape at home, but you can see why I don't. <laughs> it costs me between two and, and five dollars to print this uh, this pattern out, and like just on one sheet and. Um, the amount of time it would take me to print and tape all of that, plus the fact that it's, in my view, you know, rather wasteful. And um, my time is worth more than $5 for, I don't, I don't even know how much time it would take me to do this whole thing. So yeah, I'm not a print and tape. I mean, I have to, a pattern has to be really small, like a hat or something. Um, otherwise, I'm not going to do it. So a dolman, this is a dolman sleeve, and loosely this means that the sleeve piece is cut on, it's totally attached to the actual shirt body, and there's no additional seam at that sleeve shoulder area. Okay, so here I am. You can see where I've graded, so that means I've cut across different sizes. Okay. Hi Christina, hi Mario, hi Ralph. And um, a dolman is kind of like the simplest uh, type of shirt that you can possibly make. <laughs> Especially a dolman that is made from a knit like this is. So I am just whipping this out here. And I'm making sure that I I'm cutting the so again I'm, her bust was at the 2xl so that means that up here up here for the sleeve area I am cutting the 2xl size and that's the fourth line in so it can be kind of confusing the concept of grading it gets less confusing the more you do it and you start to kind of get fluent and understand all sorts of cool things that you can do with grading. Okay. So here I am cutting out. There's my back. It's kind of a nice curvy shape, isn't it? Because people are curvy. The, um, the body positivity movement is super irritating. Mario, you're asking about print my printer. So actually, this this pattern was just printed here in Aberdeen at Staples for five bucks, the whole thing. We emailed it to them, they printed it, we picked it up. Easy. Um, but I actually normally use PDF plotting, which is pdfplotting.com. And you, it's a little tricky, you actually bundle up all of your different patterns. But I'll tell you, I have printed, I, I mean, like, lots of patterns, you know, a dozen at a time, different sizes, all of that for 20 bucks. It, it ends up being a couple bucks a pattern. Uh, it's awesome. 
But yeah, so here's my, I've got my back and my front and my neck band. That's like literally all we needed to cut out for this, this t-shirt, okay? Super, super simple. Yeah, but what I was saying about the body positivity movement is we've got this concept of bodies that, oh, I, you know, that have curves and curves are, curves are great. It's like, you know what? Everybody has curves. Even the boniest, skinniest person I've ever sewn for has curves. Our bodies all have curves. It's just a matter of um, how extreme the curves are from a sewing perspective. So for me, a plus size person is not harder to sew for at all than a slender person. And if um, identifying yourself as curvy makes you feel better, then do it. But um, unfortunately, there seems to be a this idea comes with it that people who aren't women that aren't curvy are somehow less desirable or less of a woman and that is just so much bullshit so there's my little social political rant of the day okay I am sewing with and hello Astrid I am sewing with a incredibly annoying <laughs> very lightweight very pretty very silky soft sweater knit okay so as quick as it was for us to grade and cut out the pattern, this is the part that's going to take just a minute to really kind of straighten out this knit. So you'll see in patterns, they'll tell you to like lay out the entire yardage folded in half. But I have found with knits, it's better to lay it and cut one piece at a time. I feel like I just get a better result on the grain. So, so this is gonna, this is like probably the most annoying knit I've sewn with so far on this little channel I've got here. But nevertheless, it's not that hard to, to, this is where I wish I had some kind of like GoPro camera so I could really get up close to this grain and really show you exactly where that grain line is. So I've kind of guessed at how wide I need to fold that over. Oh, I almost made it. the front and when you have a large yardage like this you want to make sure it's all being supported by the table you don't want any hanging off the table because it will distort the fabric and you won't get a nice um, symmetrical cut so this is a shirt I'm making just as a gift for a friend because I knew I was going to, look, now it's too big. So I'll use the back piece. Okay. That's just going to bother me too much and I'm going to have to fix it. Now's a good time to really kind of recognize whether your, look at, I got it perfect this time, whether your pattern has a nap. In other words, whether it looks different upside down from itself. And if it doesn't, you have more options for cutting, which I'll demonstrate in a second here. Okay, so there I've got my, my back. And in this case, Ooh, I should look this up. Let's look up what our seam allowance is real quick. Come on. I'm not finding it. That's one problem with these massive patterns that have every bit of information of all time about um, okay it gives you the def see this is what I'm talking about it gives you the definition of the seam allowance but I'm like okay what is the seam allowance for this pattern um,
This is annoying. I'm gonna sew it at a half an inch because I can't find it right now. I bet it's a half an inch. Okay, well, too bad for me. Oh, I finally found it on page 13. It says, seam allowance is a quarter inch, hem allowance is a half an inch. So what that means is on the hems, we're going to be folding up the bottom hem and the shirt hem a half an inch. Um, okay, so if the seam allowance is a half of an inch, or excuse me, a quarter, and for some reason this has a back seam, and you can you can fully ignore what I'm about to say if it's if it makes you crazy, and you can um, cut out two separate back pieces and stitch them together, which is the very first step on page 13. But since it's a totally straight seam, I'm just gonna tug this pattern piece a quarter of an inch in to to represent that seam allowance. I'm just gonna cut out the back in one piece, and that means that I don't have to. I don't have to do that that first stitch so you can only do this when you have a perfectly straight back seam and on a knit garment um, that that isn't super snug like a bathing suit is a good example of a knit garment it's made with knit fabric stretchy fabric but it's very snug fitting and on a bathing suit you will not have, you will likely not have a center back seam that is straight. So you can't really do this little hack, but this is the kind of, even the fitted version of this shirt is a little bit loose fitting. Hello, Janae, Andrea, Tracy. I know people are popping in and out, so by the time I say hi, they might be gone, but I'm lost. Okay. Now I've got, I've got this scrap and see, I'm not good with the camera. This is a good thing to keep to test. Let's check it over there by my sewing machine to test your stitches. Okay. And then this is something I all, almost always do at necklines right here. I am going to make this tiny and I mean eighth of an inch notch to mark the center back. Okay. So it's right, I mean, we're small. If you're not confident that you can cut such a small notch, then you need to use chalk or thread or something else. Okay, so that was my back piece. And I'm gonna put this paper pattern piece aside. And now I've got the front. So here's what I was talking about with the nap. This, this remaining leg, of my yardage it is not it is not wide enough to cut her front it's 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 just not going to be wide enough okay but what i can do if there isn't a nap if the fabric is essentially the same right side up or upside down i can fold it this is like a yardage saving thing. <laughs> I can fold it, seam allowance to, or I'm sorry, selvage to selvage, and that will, that's sort of the best thing you can do for the yardage for the fabric. I have enough fabric to make at least one more of these shirts. So again, now I'm sitting there messing around, dicking around. Oh. No, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, sorry. So I can do that only if I'm if I have a seam in the center front. So actually, that that is why this pattern had a seam in the center back, so that your first time you would have cut um, actually the front of the shirt, and the second time you could if you wanted to fold that over and cut the back and leave that seam. But that's okay. We're just going to cut the front exactly the same as we cut the back. So, sorry for the misdirection. 
some of y'all were like, I don't, I didn't know what you were saying at any point during that. So that's all right. And by the way, saving yardage, like being, being really exacting and not wasting yardage, that comes with time because how many times have I made mistakes, like thought I was being clever and conserving yardage and I somehow cut my fabric in such a way that I sort of screwed myself out of um, and either had to buy more or do some kind of workaround, which is so annoying. So again, like I said, this is this fabric is, you know, picky. It's like, it doesn't like being helpful. But the same properties that make it kind of difficult to fold and get a super straight grain are the same properties that make it drape really, really nicely um, and just sort of flow over the body. So again, I'm just trying to get it flat and get that grain super straight and it's kind of not yet. This is this is like I watch my husband and kids they'll help me like fold fabric and you I've watched them over the years get really good at finding the grain with their hands. They don't even know they know how to do it. Um because it's it's a delicate process. It's kind of like if you're a knitter and you tangle your ball of yarn, you can't just go in and start yanking on the on the string to untangle it. You have to do you have to be very delicate. Okay. I'm gonna straighten this just a little more. My friend Janae, who was here just a minute ago, I think she's gone now, but she has this noodle shop. Narns rice and noodles here in town and I have already been there twice this week and last night in the middle of the night I texted my oldest and I said we can't go there again we, like we've, we've already been there twice this week and he was like why not one thing is I don't want to get tired of that noodle dish if I have it too much okay finally Here we are, and again, you notice I kind of have all this fabric kind of bundled right here. That's so so that it's not hanging off the edge. Okay, and I I also covered this in other classes, but you notice I don't really use pattern weights. Um, that's because I'm really good at cutting with a rotary cutter. Uh, back in the day when my mom was first teaching me how to sew, you not only, like we would just pin the heck out of it, pin this like really flimsy tissue paper, and then we would use these viskers, like, whoops, like cheap ass scissors, the kind of scissors you find at like Walmart, and uh, we would cut, I mean it would just take forever to cut out our our fabrics and I like a lot of sewers I developed I don't I came to not like laying out my pattern cutting out my pattern and um, rotary the rotary cutter and mat totally solved that problem for me I also think it's less hard on your wrist to use rotary equipment so again right here little clip and I'll show you on the paper pattern. My light seems to be better. Right here. Center, front, neckline, raw edge. Little clip. Or mark with thread or mark with chalk. Okay, so that was my front. So, oh, I got one more thing to cut. That's the neckline. That's this little strip. And I'm going to tell you something that is just a sad, inconvenient truth. Inconvenient truth. When it comes to t-shirts, almost the only difficult part of the t-shirt is this neckline. 
because patterns usually come with instructions like a piece of paper that says cut your neckline exactly this width uh, you know this distance but the thing is knit fabrics really vary in how much they stretch and how much they spring back And so what will happen is I'll see these sewing groups online and people have neck bands that are super loose or super tight to where there's a bunch of like ripples in the neckline edge. And they are trying to find some sort of exotic solution or reason that they're having that problem. And it, honestly, it's just that getting the exact neckline um, length here is a little bit of an art as much of a science because the fab fabrics are all different. So I have found that a lot of patterns have just a slightly, the, the neck band is a little short. Um, the best bands as far as a pattern that I've ever experienced um, are from Dali which is a Canadian company. But it's just one of those things where if your neck band, like when we get to the neck band, if I don't have, if it's not feeling right, I'm going to come cut a new one. But for now, let's assume that it's, it's all right. <laughs> okay. So there, I've got my, this fabric, so gross. Okay. So now we're over here at the sewing machine. So, um, there we go. Okay, so here's my neck band I just cut out. Do you know what drives me a little goofy is I have my battery pack for my microphone in a better place today. Guess where it is. Anyway, it's a better place, but I can't see the light to make sure that the mic is on. I have had the mic drop out before. Mmm. That's some good coffee. Okay. What was I talking about? Mm. Oh, let's test our stitches a little bit. The stretchier and um sort of drapier the fabric is, which this is fairly drapey, fairly stretchy. The more you might have to mess around a little bit but i have found for this construction with this um, i did a little testing with this fabric and i have a zigzag stitch this is going to be my stitch for both construction and for hemming and i have it at um, one and a half millimeters wide zigzag and a 2.5 long okay so i think you should start there too one and a half millimeter wide zigzag and a two and a half millimeter long. Okay. And I've just got a little scrap here. And I'm going to demonstrate how to make this shirt without a serger with, with just a zigzag. And I'm going to demonstrate how to make it with serge, with um, a serger as your seam finish. So, I've got this little zigzag, you can see it here, and that is uh, supposedly, you know, two and a half millimeters long and one and a half wide. And it, it doesn't look quite one and a half wide because, because it's going into a knit, and the knit kind of eats the stitch a little. So, if I pull on that, it, it stretches a little, and it doesn't need to stretch a lot, um, because this is... Because the fabric for the shirt is so stretchy, the seam. So for all of our seams, if you're on a zigzag, I'm going to want you to do two, two rows. Okay, do you see those two rows there? And that's going to make a nice strong seam. And I, I sewed my first at about three-eighths of an inch instead of a quarter of an inch. Guess what, you guys? It's okay to do that. 
even though the seam allowance is um, a quarter inch, it's okay. So that will be my construction seam. And turn this little tube inside out. That's a strong seam. Oh my gosh, I've got a little leg warmer. <laughs> I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> um, that's freaking awesome. Okay. I have to leave that on. <laughs> I don't know why that's like tickling me. But my point is, it's a strong seam. Like I'm pulling on it and it's not popping. Okay. Okay, so let's go ahead. At this point, I want to tell you I am departing from the pattern, okay? Um, I might check it, take a look at it every now and then. How do I do that? So I will do that. So it's telling us to stitch your um, back bodice pieces right side together. So I'm here. I'm on the upper left camera here, and I'm on. Um, I'm so bad at the cameras. I'm on page 13. It says place your back bodice pieces right sides together, pin or clip together, sew, and press the seam open. So if, if you did cut out your two back bodice pieces instead of taking my little shortcut and cutting it out as one, go ahead and do this. You don't need to press the seam open, but sew your two parallel lines there. And then it's going to tell us to um, sew the shoulder seams together. So I am going to do that. I'm going to do that with my zigzag, okay? So, um, there we go. Let me move my, some of this stuff. Shoulders, the shoulder seams, um, that's a good place to, to start. I love, I love my little leg warmer on my finger. Should I wear it on a different finger? I don't know. Okay, so here I'm going to get my pins. And remember for almost all, uh, for almost all sewing you sew. Man, this is a really stretchy, drapey fabric. Okay. So there I have either my front or my back. I don't even know. It doesn't matter right now. I'm putting it right sides up with the shoulders up there. That must be the back because this neckline on this piece is deeper. And now I'm just going to pin these long shoulder seams. So the shirt I'm wearing today is actually from this pattern. But I cropped it because I've, I've been really liking cropped length shirts lately. So I cropped it and um, I cut the sleeves way shorter. So as I'd mentioned a moment before, I'm going to depart from the sewing pattern a little bit. And that will be right after this seam. So first, I'm going to pin these shoulder seams together. I... I hope y'all are making this in a more stable, like a cotton lycra or something. If you're using a rayon, I think this is some kind of rayon poly blend. It just feels like it. If it was 100% polyester, I think it would feel a little beefier. Rayon is, it also has a little bit of a sheen, which makes me think it might be rayon. Rayon often has a little bit of a sheen. Rayon, I really like. I wear it a lot. I'm wearing it. This black shirt I'm wearing today is a rayon crepe, which I love because it's it has the properties of rayon, but it has a matte, like textured finish, which is also extremely attractive to cat hair, as I've discovered. Like if my cats even think about me, um, this shirt gets cat hair on it. So that's nice. Okay, so this these construction seams I am going to do just like I showed you with two parallel uh, stitching lines and after that I'm going to use my serger on my because it's faster okay so here I am and 
Am I out? No, check my bobbin. My bobbin's at. Oh, look! You guys are gonna get a little bobbin winding. You're gonna watch my shortcuts. Yeah. Okay, so last night we went and saw the new Godzilla movie, which um, my oldest and I are huge Godzilla fans. Like, we've been looking forward to it. I'd avoided every spoiler. And um, boy, what a mixed bag because the monsters were almost like surpassed expectations and the monster fights were also super great but the plot and the acting was so poor like the plot was bad hello andrea how are you i hope you're still on how are you like i've been watching all your posts and you seem to be doing some really awesome workshops on fit which I think is great and not and especially because they're like live videos um, I'm talking to my friend Andrea Davis who has a group called sew to fit and she does a lot of videos and tutorials and um, she's got a great community okay This, this knit is just drama. Okay, so remember what I said. I said that even though the um, the seam allowance is a quarter inch, I'm going to be naughty and I'm going to sew at 3 8 so that I can get two lines of stitching really easily. So I'm just going to go ahead and sew that first um, seam right at that 3 8 This I, I really do hope you all have a nicer knit than this. Like I said, this knit is going to look great on the body, but it's just not that fun to work with. And, you know, to be honest, so the serging that I'm going to do is just for seam finishes today. I'm not doing a construction serge. Um, but this is the kind of fabric where it was meant for it to be constructed on a serger. Huh. Mm -hmm. I read a comment here. Sorry for the delay here. Okay. So now, um, second seam, second. My friend pointed out a couple lessons ago that I'm, I just sew right up next to the next seam, and that works just fine. I think she called it chain stitching, which that's kind of a quilter's term. But I think, of course, now chain stitching to me has to do with making basically jeans. <laughs> A different thing. All or chain stitching is also how you make um, chenille style uh, artwork and patchwork on those amazing old singers that I'm obsessed with. Okay, so here I am sewing my second shoulder seam. And that's, that's that seam right there. And now I'm going to do my second seam to make sure it's strong. And this time I'm just going to sew right next to um, right next to that first seam, just the eighth of an inch over. Okay. And if you're having a really hard time being exact, don't worry. This is how you get better. And the other thing is, the reason that I brought us in to 3 eighths of an inch is so that I would have a lot of room, because especially on a stretchy knit like this, you don't want to be sewing your second seam um, 
just a sec. I'm getting up for 901 text. Okay. What was I saying? I was saying you can't really sew your second seam right on the edge of the knit. It won't behave well. It won't be fun. So here I am, second seam. This is just a reinforcement seam. I've mentioned before, like knit fabric does not ravel, unravel, excuse me. And so um, unlike a lot of uh, woven like fabrics like jeans or um, shirts or whatever you have to finish the seam which is what I'm doing right now you have to finish the seam for different reasons <laughs> the only reason we're doing it at all is to add some strength so I will be cutting with my little rotary cutter I'm going to cut off just to make that look a little bit neater there right here so I've got my little shoulder seams And you can cut them by scissors if you like. And please do if you're not incredibly skilled with a rotary cutter. <laughs> but I am. And guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag on camera. I have never cut myself with my rotary cutter. Um, now that I say that, I'm going to have some horrific accident. But I'm just telling you, um, what I'm saying is I've been very, very, very careful and um, that has paid off. So if you like, you can take that, those seams to your ironing board and press them. And I'm actually going to do that. Uh, normally you don't do a lot of pressing when it comes to a knit garment like this, like a t-shirt. But um, I feel like in this case, especially for that shoulder seam, it's nice. Okay, you can't see me because I'm over here at my ironing board. So here I go. If I ever get the donations for it, I look forward to putting lights and camera on my ironing board because that's an important part of sewing. Okay, so this is kind of, well, you can't really see it, but I've got that really stable shoulder seam now. Okay, so here is where I'm going to depart from the pattern. Uh, I have found with a dolman, with a dolman top, that there we go. That actually um, hemming at this point, hemming your sleeve is smarter than sewing the side seam and then hemming. Okay. Oh, then, and that is also what the pattern has decided. Okay, great. So it's telling us to um, actually hem the front and the back and the sleeves and then finally sew the side seams. That's funny. That's exactly what I would do. Um, so I am not departing from the pattern. We are, we are still in alignment. So I'm going to, um, this just tells you to press, uh, press up a half of an inch. I see. They're having you press and then stitch, stitch and then hem. That's okay. Well, we're going to go ahead and hem the sleeves all the way. So we're going to do this pressing that's right in the middle of page 14. And before I do that, I'm going to serge those edges. Um, so right here on my little serger. Okay. Because I have found that and again, this is not, this is just surging for the sake of finishing the seam. I have found that 
when you serge a knit like this, it gives you a more stable edge. If you don't have a serger, you can ignore what I'm saying right now. But look at why are these garbage paper scissors here? I must have been doing some paper craft. Um, it's worth getting a vintage serger. You can find one for like a hundred dollars, but um, just you want to make sure that it runs. And but it's really great for needing your seams. So this is my, I'm about to stitch and flip that. The pattern is telling us just to flip it and press it. So you can do that or you can do what I'm about to do. So I'm going to go ahead and serge finish the raw edge of the other seam. Boy, I'll tell you, using this um, rayon knit is, like slowing it down quite a bit from using a nice stable cotton uh, lycra. That's okay. So you can now go ahead and take this to your ironing board and press that seam the wrong side. Remember the pattern said a half of an inch. A little, little tiny bit fussy, but believe it or not, we're, I don't know, like 40% done already. We're halfway done. So actually taking your time to press this hem, either before or after you stitch, is a way to get a really gorgeous looking t-shirt. It makes a difference. Just remember too that some knits, just depending, like if I was, I'm about to make a friend some t-shirt really similar actually t-shirts but made with a linen knit and linen notoriously will give a sheen when you press it so you just have to press it differently you know use a press cloth or actually hover you know keep the surface of the iron away from the fabric and use a clapper um, just experiment with your when you're first messing so because you don't want a sheen on your fabric nobody will notice but you Promise. And here we go. Really? Here we go. So I pressed, you notice. And I'm going to go ahead and sew. Ugh, this, this knit is just giving me drama. So look at that. That's looking really nice. And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom of the shirt, for the hem. Um, let me find my other sleeve. I think that, so traditionally you, you do hems last. You know, you would be sewing the side seam before you would um, deliver the 
shirt sleeve hems and the shirt hems. And that's fine, but this pattern is has caught is wise to the fact that that actually makes it harder to hem because you have these like curves in that in that shirt sleeve and that hem um, seam line, and it makes it a little trickier. And you get you can get like ripples in your hem, and so that's why we're doing both the pattern and my little hack are doing things kind of out of order. It still will look great. So, if you're like me and you pick this challenging knit, then you're right now you're super irritated. So that's all right. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I've done this with the shirt sleeve. Do the same thing with the hem. I'm gonna go ahead and. I'm going to serge finish, then fold up the bottom of both the front and the back hem and then stitch it down just like I did for the sleeves. And if you don't have a serge, don't don't zigzag finish it first. <laughs> There's no point to that. Just do like the pattern says. Okay, so here's my it's already it already looks good, right? I already I don't have any ripples in that. If you have a few ripples, just press them. Press them in, doesn't matter. But that's the advantage of both my time and experience, but also doing that little press ahead of time. So you've got um, a nice amount of stretch. Do you see that? So that the shirt sleeves won't feel constricting on your upper arm, but it's a strong stitch. It won't be as strong as our construction seam, so don't yank on it super hard. Okay, so here I go back to my serging. thirsty work. Anyone who knows me in real life knows that I'm pretty talkative, but mm. coffee, coffee, sweet coffee. Okay, so same thing. Find this bottom edge. And surge finish. My lovely little man. Who is this? Oh, did I bump your head? Yes, he is. I'm taking a break. Showing a break. Oh, he's such a good boy. Mm -hmm. Can I on my lap? Hmm? Mm. Mm. All right. I'm looking forward to getting my friend. She's sending me her some really beautiful knit knits um, made out of linen, and um, I get to make her. I just she she owns a fabric shop. I just know that the fabrics she picks are gorgeous. My pressing board. Hello, Crystal. Hopefully, I catch people before they pop back off just to say hi. I know how live videos work and people pop on and go, oh, wait, never mind, I don't care about this, and they pop off. That's totally cool. So, I do like to say hi. Okay, here I am pressing up. Oh, this. Yes, this would be nice if I could show you this process um, if I had a camera on my ironing board. Um, this is this is so this pressing before like like the pattern says pressing first is a great way to get a really nice hem especially considering this pattern has a curved hem 
which is if you don't press it first, you can have all these ripples. Like I see this in sewing groups where people have this ugly hem and they're frustrated and they think that it's their tension or their differential feed or blah, 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 blah. And a lot of times you, you know, you don't need, um, you need skills, not uh, expensive sewing equipment. You need to know how to handle the fabric. And this pattern is saying, hey, press these, you know, curved hems first. And it's a good advice. So I'm over here, and I'm actually, while I'm at it, I gave my, this is looking great. <laughs> this is looking great despite the fact that today has been a shit show, to be honest. I've had tech problems um, that started like yesterday, no, last night, day, sorry, night before last. We had this weird power outage in town, and that set my whole life back, and then I had a part of my stove stopped working and I cook a lot so I've just been having setback after setback without really time to recover although I did make time for Godzilla because come on so just finishing up pressing this hem and we're getting close to being done so here is my pressed hem. Okay. And the pattern doesn't say to do this, but I'm telling you, you can go ahead and stitch this hem down, just like we did with the shirt sleeve. You can also follow the pattern. So again, as I stitch it, I already, I don't have any ripples. That's a great sign. Next month, we are making a much, well, it's more, compl it's more lengthy. It's not more complex. We're making a summer, no, is that next month? Let me look. Next month is June. Yes, we're making a, what I call the sundress, but it's basically, uh, it has a fitted bodice with these really beautiful front pleats and um, it's sleeveless and it has uh, a bunch of, actually it's funny, Yulia, I don't know if she's still on, but she popped on for a minute. It's actually from her, one of her company's pattern lines. So it's a really beautiful, um, it's got a pleated skirt. Anyway, the, the picture of the pattern and, and the, uh, the line drawing and all of the fabrics, that'll be up there on my website on the 1st of June. And it's a really great, like, I've talked about this before, but a lot of times the beginning sewing class is going to teach you how to make something like a pillowcase, which is cool. In fact, I would love to have more custom pillowcases in my life, but... This is a dress. Like, you'll go out and wear this, and people will say, that's amazing. Where did you buy that? And you'll say, I made it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what we'll be making next week. And there's a little homework. Like, you're going to need to find your pattern, uh, print your pattern out. Just a little bit longer of a project. So here I am, I'm just sewing this hem down. And you'll notice that the sewing machine really pulls the fabric through. I'm not pushing it or even really touching it. So that's my hem. Again, nice. It looks really good. It lays really flat. Okay. So we're like almost done. Now at this point, the shirt is huge. Look at it. Okay. We're going to flip it right sides together. And this is on the um, pattern on page. Let's see. 
top of page 15. We're just pinning these side seams. We're going to sew those. Okay. Remember, this is a quarter inch. I am going to sew and then serge, but if you don't have a serger or you're not using it, um, then, and, and some of you are going to just use, just do a one pass serge because you are using your construction seam, your four, four thread seam or whatever, but I'm going to do a zigzag finish and serge it, but you can also do the two rows of zigzags that I have been demonstrating. So I'm, it's a good idea to pin, you know, <laughs> I don't pin all that much. It really depends. Like I'm at this stage, I have incredibly nimble fingers. I can't believe how much I love my little, my little like leg warmer. <laughs> I just, I don't know why. You know, like fingerless gloves, you could just make a series of finger leg warmers to keep your hands um, warm. Why has no one ever thought of that? Just little tiny, yeah, I'll tell you why, because it's probably dumb. All right, so then I'm going to pin this other side. And with this kind of a loose knit, I actually drive the pin, I kind of like sew it into the fabric. It goes in, out, in, out. Um, because otherwise it'll slide right out. So yeah, I was saying I don't I don't pin all the time because I've got I'm very dexterous. But obviously, sometimes I pin and sometimes I pin and then baste. Like la a few days ago, I was making um, some plaid trousers that I put on Instagram and I showed pictures of pinning and basting to get that really exact stitch down of the waistband facing when you do the top stitching on the waistband, like. It's worth it. I have um, a friend coming over tonight. She, a friend and a client. I'm making her a cosplay. I am looking at the cosplay. You cannot see it on my cameras, but uh, it's over there in the corner. And um, it's a certain mm, anime character. And I'm so looking forward to it. I've been really enjoying putting it together. And um, she's a plus size cosplayer, so it's really cool to be able to support and help her create her vision. Um, the cosplay consists of lots of pieces, and she, you know, she bought a few, and then I'm making her a custom part of it, and. So that's cool. That's what I get to do. And I also today get to make a satin belt um, that goes with a dress that I sold. And I get to ship that to a friend of mine in um, the Tacoma area. And my kid wants me to take him out to get some. Chinese food today, so we'll hopefully get to do that. I'll get to do that if people put money in my tip jar. Okay, so I've got my side seam. So look, this is looking great. Like this is that shoulder seam with the two zigzag stitches. This is our nice flat. Like oh, this looks. A nice flat hem and um, now we get to do this I don't know why I'm not just making myself t-shirts constantly I'll tell you why because I tend to buy very very lovely and expensive um, fabric so right now I'm focusing on working yeah so here's your so if you if you don't have a serger go ahead and stitch your second seam and, and trim it down and press it. Yeah, we're all we've got to do after this is the neckline. Oh, I just realized I might be able to um, mess around with my my face cam and show you guys 
the finished shirt on my little dressmaker doll. I think that'll be cool. Okay, here's the side seam. I'm going to go over and serge it. And then I'll show you a way that I... Um, here's my little serger. I'm going to show you a way that I tidy up my serge seams. Okay. All right, now I'm going to find the other one. I think I had planned to make a wrapped dress out of this fabric a long time ago, and I don't remember for who. Okay, so here's my serge that I just finished and I am going to take a blunt needle I think this is sometimes called a darning needle but I'm somehow um, missing that uh, memory so I'm going to take my darning needle and I'm going to pass it into into that actual serge channel just like that and then I'm going to take my little serge tail that I just stitched thread it through the eye and pull it in and very carefully clip and that basically hides and tidies the end of that seam so this this is how it looks on the outside it looks perfectly great Okay, I'm going to do that to all four of those little serged ends. This is basically, I've been making a lot of dolman. Uh, I'll try to do it on camera, although it's less convenient. I've been making a lot of dolman t shirts for myself and for clients lately. Like I just posted one yesterday that had the Kenji characters uh, for Godzilla on it. I did my first screen printing project. Yay! Um, and oh wait, that wasn't a dolman though. That was a standard uh, set in sleeve. But anyway, I've been making a lot of t-shirts and, um, it's, it's really fun to start to get the exact fit, like as simple as, of a garment as t-shirts are, depending on your, the design ease that you have and, um, the fabric that you use, you can, the style of t-shirt like a raglan versus a dolman versus a saddle shoulder versus a set in sleeve um boy you can do a lot of different things and the fabric makes a huge difference like a t-shirt made with a rayon like something that's 94 percent rayon and six percent spandex is going to act so different than a 94 percent cotton six percent spandex hello kim I've made Kim a couple t-shirts. Okay, so we're pretty, we're like, we've got one thing left, okay? So here's my t-shirt so far. This was the point where you finally can really tell where the, um, <laughs> this is the front and this is the back, okay? Uh, the deeper scoop is, almost always the front okay 
and I'm coming over here for a moment to uh, get my my little dressmaker doll uh, stripped down because I'm going to dump, I'm going to put the shirt on her to take some photos but then I have to dress her again she is going to be part of my fitting process when my cosplay friend comes over today ouch okay I like to say I've never stabbed clients I have stabbed um, myself with pins. Okay, so what's left? The neckline. As I said, pretty much the trickiest part of the t shirt. Okay, so first, I have a vibe that I might have to recut a longer. We'll just see. So first, you're going to sew the short ends of the neckline piece together. And I'm going to use a tiny bit of stabilizer. I think I've used this in class before. This is a stabilizer that will dissolve. Um, in water but it just keeps the um <clears throat> this really delicate knit from being pulled into the feed dog you can actually just use paper and then carefully tear the paper off so there's the back side of my stabilizer see how i've got that nice back stitched bit at the front and the beginning of that um, or the front and the end of that little seam. And make sure your neckband isn't twisted when you sew it. We were also watching we watched a little bit of Captain Marvel again last night. So that was is great actually. Okay, so there's my little neckband seam. And then go ahead and just gently, we're going to mark the center of that neckband. You can also do that when you cut. And I am talking the world's tiniest clip, okay? If you aren't positive, you can do a, you have to have the right scissors on it, you can do a tiny clip. Then you need to use a pen. I'll do both. So there's my little clip. It's so small. Um, but you want to know where that center is. Of that neckband is. I already lost it. Oh, there it is. So let me just put a little blue mark there. Okay. You can use thread, whatever, but don't don't be like cutting too deep of a notch and getting upset. This is a small uh, seam allowance, so we don't have a lot of room to cut notches. So, okay. So again, I've got the back. The notch that we cut when made when we cut the the back out, that is going to correspond. Look at how skinny this neckband is. So that's going to correspond to the center back seam that we just sewed on the neckband. So I fold the neckband long sides together, just the way that the band's going to look when it's all finished. Oh, this 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 is where you regret your slinky knit. This is just a finessing thing. And then I'm going to pin that. Like, this is going to work, but boy, I hope you have a better knit than I do for this. Um, and then I go ahead and... I think I have to do this over here. Because you guys really can't see what I'm doing. Okay. So I've pinned the center back of the neckband wrong sides together I've pinned that to that little tiny notch in the back of the shirt raw uh, neckline edge and then I'm going to gently like look at how much this stuff is cur curling so annoying so I'm going to find that little tiny tiny notch that I made there it is 
a little blue dot. I'm going to fold that together. Again, some knits are going to be less tricky than this one. So I fold that together. And then I find the front notch or thread mark or chalk or whatever. And I'm going to pin. And again, I sort of sew the pin in because it will just come out otherwise. So this is this is finesse here for sure, but this is our last thing we have to do on this t-shirt. So suck it up. So then I evenly distribute the rest of the neckband on the neckline. And again, this takes some finesse. Like, and I, of course I flipped it. Um, this takes time. Some people mark. Uh, their neckband in quarters and then they mark the neckline in quarters um, that can be a little bit tricky uh, like if you're gonna do that I recommend you actually measure the pattern and do that um, and do it on the pattern as you're cutting out I haven't found it too necessary to do that um, I just take the time to make sure that the tension um, because the neck line, the, the shirt body, is going to have um, more fabric. The point of the neck band is not just to finish the seam, but to gently gather, gently gather the, um, the shirt so that it lays close to the body and it doesn't gap. So, and again, like literally yesterday, I made a shirt in cotton and it was just. I was already done. <laughs> like this is taking so much longer because of this fussy knit. But take your time here, okay? Because you don't want to sew the neckband to the shirt and have it kind of like puckered looking and gathered looking in some spots. I am thankful to see that it looks like this neckband is the right length for the neckline again sometimes it's not and only kind of experience will tell you that okay this is good enough okay So really you can start anywhere to sew. Um, I sort of traditionally start right at that back. Um, I should take off my leg warmer. Too confusing. Okay. So, so I'm going to go ahead and start at the center back. And this is a time we do want to we don't have enough room to take a very deep seam allowance. We're going to take that quarter inch. Um, you can also move your needle over if you want to use the, the foot edge as a guide and move the needle over. You can do that. I'm pretty confident with what's going on here. So, so just sew slowly. If you have a sew slow button on your machine, this is a really good time to engage it. And just go, go, go slow. Um, make sure that you're catching both layers or all three layers because you have a folded over neck line band that's two layers, and then you have the shirt. I, as fussy as this is, it makes such a delicate, beautiful neckline. They kind of been going. And little bits and spurts to really gather. Hello, Kathy West. We are on the last leg of this shirt. We're basically um, messing with this neckline, and uh, then I will try to stick it on my little dressmaker's doll. You can see it, uh, and I'll post a picture on Instagram in just a few minutes um, 
of not only the shirt, but like I'll get some close ups of the details. Yeah, so this, I have been experimenting, like this is a great example of the different types of t-shirts. I don't like a, a scoop neck. I like more of a boat neck on me from my personal um, use. And so, you know, adjusting that neckline is a just awesome playground of <laughs> things you can do differently. Um, so when you, obviously when you make a deeper or more shallow neckline, you've got to adjust your neckband length. And there's tutorials as to how to do that. I actually have, on my website, I have the Timmel Knits. Um, they, uh, this is a Canadian uh, pattern and, um, or a, I think they sold patterns and fabrics. And anyway, they hand drew a bunch of lessons for how to sew with knit fabrics. And that's kind of, that, that and the stretch and sew book helped me out so much when I was first sewing this. And I asked permission when they closed down their website and they said yes. And so I've actually re-hosted those um, files on my own blog. Hi, Chelsea. Okay, we're just about done. So we're stitching this together here. Yeah, and this was a case where the neckband was definitely long enough for the neckline. Great. And you're just going to find that different fabrics have different stretch and recovery. There we go, I'm done. And um, so you could sew your second line of stitching here if you want. I'm going to serve it um, to finish it. You could probably just leave it without, but I have found over time that stabilizing with a second row of, so look, this, this actually looks, wait, did I screw it up? No. This looks pretty good. Um, actually, this looks great. Really, really pretty. So, very delicate little um, band. We're done with the shirt as soon as I um, stitch that, uh, or finish that seam. Okay. All right. Here I come. I like to start in the back center seam just where I started stitching when I'm doing my serge finish. That's that tail that I'm going to thread through just like I showed you. Hi Chelsea, I don't know if you're still on, but hello. It's awesome to see you. I've been reading your Facebook post. Good stuff. Okay. And... Let's see, there we go. So, we can press the um, neckline again I I think I think pressing the neckline where you don't actually let the iron touch the fabric is the best plan you want to just give it a little steam to encourage it to relax into shape and it's funny because I have seen people say don't ever press a neckline <laughs> um, it's just, I, I found that a little steam is a good thing. All right, I'm, this is quite a loose, like, shirt. 
And if you'd made it in a more stable knit, it would be less loose. So here it is, all finished. Curvy fit, as they say in the parlance of the times. And I'm going to pop it on my little dressmaker's doll and post some photos today. So you can kind of see up close um, the final effect. Oh, it's beautiful. It, this is very pretty. Okay, so let's see if I can see if I can get the camera on it properly. Um, which one is the camera? Okay. Aha! Uh -huh. Here's my lady. Let's, let's see if I can. Okay. So here's mine. It's hard to see, but this is my version. Um, again, I cropped it much. Uh, there we go. There she is. So, again, like the same properties that you heard me bitching about the entire time I was sewing this are the same properties that make it drape really beautifully whereas something like I posted yesterday in cotton is going to have just a little bit more body and even with the same exact pattern it will look pretty different okay so we're all finished um Next month, we are making a sleeveless dress, so that's going to involve a tiny bit more homework on your part. Um, I am always available via text, um, Facebook Messenger, email. Kelly at Hogaboom.org is a really great way to email me. Um, I, I really encourage you, if you're going to sew with me, to do the homework first, because if you show up and, you're, and you haven't collected your proper materials, read through the pattern, a lot of times you get lost and you fall behind and then you can get discouraged and stop sewing. So you want to make sure that your machine is tuned up and can sew a balanced zigzag. You want to have read through your pattern, have assembled all of your materials and pre-treated your fabrics if necessary. So um, that's it for today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And I'm going to monitor this stream if there's any questions. But just the squeaky wheel gets the grease. So if you have questions, and I haven't answered them, please just hassle me again because sometimes I just don't see um, I don't see your question or it slips through or I see it and then I forget it. So uh, do not ever feel bad pestering me. Okay. Have a great Friday, you guys. All right.